Saya dengan segala hormat yang mempersilakan Yang amat berbahagia Tuan Dr. Mahathir Muhammad Untuk menyampaikan ucapan dia
Dan saya kagum dengan mereka bercakap bahasa Rusia. Spasiba, tahulah yang lain. Walaupun demikian, kita uh, adalah uh, rakyat sebuah negara yang begitu sekali berminat untuk menguasai ilmu, untuk pelajaran. Ibu bapa semuanya nak supaya anak mereka mem memiliki pelajaran kerana pelajaran menjadi kunci kepada masa depan mereka. Mereka yang tidak ada pelajaran, tidak ada ilmu, tak mungkin menjayakan diri mereka. Tetapi mereka yang mempunyai ilmu, yang berpelajaran, uh, tetap akan mendapat lebih banyak peluang untuk masa depan mereka supaya anak kepada nelayan, anak kepada penuri getah, anak kepada buang kampung yang jauh terpencil dengan pelajaran mereka dapat uh, menjayakan diri mereka sehingga kita dapati ramai daripada mereka begitu berjaya yang dahulunya kita tidak sangka mereka mampu menguasai ilmu-ilmu yang canggih saya selalu bercerita berkenaan dengan uh, sekali saya sedang uh, terbang daripada London ke, ke Kuala Lumpur dan saya dijemput naik ke flight deck boleh uh, pilot dan pilot itu datang dari Bila Kok Diam Kok Diam ni guru saya <laughs> yang orang tahu di Kok Diam ni cuma dia boleh buat pasmur dengan sedang tapi <laughs> daripada itu tak ada tiba-tiba ni ni ada pilot 747 datang dari Bila Kok Diam dan dia sudah tentu dapat menjadi pilot kerana dia berusaha untuk menguasai ilmu boleh dalam bahasa Inggeris dan boleh belajar tentang kompleksiti offline sebuah pesawat seperti 747 ini jelas menunjuk bahawa walaupun kita daripada latar belakang yang tidak begitu terkenal dengan ilmu tetapi kalau kita berusaha menguasai ilmu Percayalah kita akan dapat menguasai ilmu itu Kalau kita betul-betul bertekun Saya selalu mencerita kepada semua orang Iaitu Tuhan menjadikan kita demikian Iaitu apabila kita membuat sesuatu Berkali-kali tak dapat tidak kita akan jadi cekap dalam bidang itu Ini naluri manusia The nature of human beings Apabila mereka membuat sesuatu berkali-kali Mereka akan menjadi lebih cekap daripada dulu Kalau dia hanya mencuba sekali saja Tak mungkin Tak mungkin menjadi cekap Mereka dia mempunyai otak geliga Tetapi yang membuat otak geliga pun Kalau tak usaha ber berkali-kali Tak akan dapat kejayaan yang cukup tinggi bukan saja daripada segi penguasaan ilmu dalam daripada buku-buku tetapi juga untuk kecekapan apa-apa mengukir umpamanya kalau kita mengukir kita kali pertama kita mengukir hasilnya cukup dulu tetapi kalau kita buat berkali-kali kita akan menjadi lebih cekap dan hasilnya lebih canggih lebih canggih lagi daripada Mula. Jadi apakah makna ini? Maknanya ialah satu bangsa boleh memajukan diri mereka kerana mereka sanggup berusaha bertepun dan rajin berkali-kali me me mengejar ilmu ataupun kecekapan maka bangsa itu akan menjadi lebih berjaya daripada dahulu. Sebab itulah Walaupun kita mungkin terdiri daripada anak nelayan atau penuhi kita Tetapi kalau kita sanggup berusaha InsyaAllah kita akan uh, berjaya Jadi, education Pelajaran adalah satu alat untuk memajukan diri sendiri Dan memajukan masyarakat kita dan bangsa kita Kalau kita rajin kalau kita guna pelajaran, maka kita akan ting dapat tingkatkan prestasi negara kita. Dan saya percaya kita semua sudah uh, 
kalau dahulu tak ramai orang luar daripada Malaysia yang tahu di, di mana Malaysia pun dulu saya bila berjalan ke luar negeri uh, bila ada orang tanya uh, awak daripada mana kita jawab Malaysia oh Malaysia di mana itu jadi sekarang tak tak tanya lagi dah dan kalau tanya Malaysia dia kata, oh, Twin Tower Spank, 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 F1 sakit Jadi, semua ini dapat kita lakukan Dan kita dapat majukan negara kita Dan kita dapat majukan negara kita Kerana kita menguasai ilmu Kalau kita tidak ada ilmu Maka mustahil kita dapat menggayakan negara kita sebab itulah, kalau pun kita terpaksa uh, hidup dalam salji, sejuk nyaman, saya tak tahu pun saya apa Meraya di sini, saya lari Sejuk juga, tapi tadi saya tak tahu Orang lain semua buat shopping, open air shopping, saya tu dalam kereta Dia lambat tadi, saya shopping sikit Tak ada lama So, kalau ada keinginan, keinginan Kerana kita guna, kita dapat menguasai ilmu uh, yang tetap kita memajukan diri kita, memajukan masyarakat kita, memajukan negara kita. Tapi walaupun kita maju, kita juga harus cekap dalam bidang pentadbiran negara kita. Kalau kita tidak cekap, maka uh, Negara kita akan tidak akan dapat dimajukan. Uh, kita tahu dahulu kala di Rusia ini mereka mempunyai pemerintahan kursi, iaitu pemerintahan oleh uh, raja yang dipanggil sah. Uh, ada raja yang baik, kadang-kadang ada raja yang tak baik. Uh, yang yang menyebabkan rakyat Menderita Tidak ada kemajuan Yang dapat dicapai Dan kalau ada pemberontakan Maka senang saja Diselesaikan pemberontakan Boleh-boleh saja uh, Dengan cara potong kepala Saya pergi ke Red Square tadi Dia tunjuk tempat Dulu ke potong kepala Kita tak bantu dulu pun Tapi Itu cara lama Dan Walaupun kalau raja itu bijak Dapat juga dia memajukan negara Negaranya Dan kita tahu Peter the Great adalah seorang raja yang bijak Tapi agak bengis sikit Siapa lawan dengan dia, dia potong kepala Dan dia potong kepala sendiri Saya tengok ada gambar yang tak Dan bila saya tak tengok dia buat Betul Tapi dalam bila dia tunjuk macam mana dia Uh, bercakap dengan orang yang dia dah potong kepala tu dia cakap orang dia kenal seorang jenuh yang dia kenal dia bercakap lepas itu dia ambil kapak potong kepala itu zaman dulu lah Alhamdulillah sekarang ni kita tak potong kepala macam tu dan ada orang yang kata tak boleh hukum guna pun tak boleh tapi dia telah berusaha untuk memodernkan negara Rusia Sebenarnya Rusia ini adalah sebuah negara yang cukup uh, backward Yang tidak ada kemajuan uh, Mereka hidup dalam keadaan yang tidak sempurna Tidak seperti negara-negara barat Eropah Tetapi Peter the Great ini uh, Berpendapat bahawa negara Rusia juga harus maju seperti negara-negara barat uh, England United Kingdom dan France dan Germany dia ni nak supaya Rusia ini juga jadi seperti negara-negara itu dan boleh kerana dia mempunyai kuasa mutlak kuasa over life and death di negara Rusia ini maka dia dapat uh, memaksa rakyat uh, Rusia ini supaya meniru cara-cara barat Sehingga Rusia ini boleh mengeluarkan senjata-senjata yang canggih Seperti meriam dan sebagainya pada ketika itu agak canggih 
Dan Rusia semakin lama menjadi semakin kuat Dia dapat membesarkan Rusia sehingga ke Siberia Sehingga ke Vladivostok Dan di sini pula dia dapat menguasai Ataupun menakluk negara-negara sekeliling Rusia Ini kita degree Walaupun di zaman itu tidak di demokrasi Rakyat berasa uh, tertindas Tetapi kerana gajah ini mempunyai vision untuk menjadikan Rusia sebuah negara yang maju Maka dia hanya berjaya Menggunakan kuasa untuk memajukan uh, Negara Rusia ini Saya dah sekarang ini Rusia sudah terkenal Sebagai sebuah negara yang uh, Cukup kuat Dari segi uh, Ketenteraan Tetapi kita di zaman ini Malaysia Tak dapatlah kena Adakan seorang yang bengis Yang uh, begitu Punya uh, visi untuk memajukan negara uh, Sebab itu masa saya jadi Perdana Menteri Saya ingin juga nak potong kepada orang Supaya mereka takut kepada saya Dan boleh saya majukan Malaysia Tapi Malangnya mereka tetap bagi kuasa itu kepada saya Maksudlah juga cara lain uh, Tetapi Alhamdulillah Kita dapat bekerjasama Rakyat dengan kerjaan bekerjasama Untuk membangunkan negara kita Dan kita dapat menjadi sebuah negara Yang terbangun Di antara negara-negara Yang membangun yang lain Kalau kita perhatikan Uh, banyak negara-negara yang mencapai kemerdekaan Sama dengan semasa kita mencapai kemerdekaan Tetapi mereka tidak maju Mereka tidak maju Malaysia maju Malaysia maju kerana kita faham Tentang cara-cara mentadbir negara Tanpa potong kepala Tapi menggunakan sistem demokrasi Nah, sistem demokrasi ini bukanlah satu sistem yang mudah untuk di apa di sana untuk dicairkan. Uh, karena demokrasi memberi kebebasan kepada kita uh, dan kita boleh menjatuhkan kerjaan semata-mata dengan mudi. Uh, kita boleh uh, uh, mengadakan demonstrasi, kita boleh mogok, kita boleh buat macam-macam karena Keutamaan kita beri kepada diri kita Tidak Kepada negara tapi kepada diri kita Demokrasi Menjanjikan kepada kita Kebebasan You can do what you like You are free Nak cakap apa pun boleh Nak uh, Demonstrasi pun boleh Nak ada strike pun boleh Nak uh, Kita benar-benar yang kau pun boleh Macam-macam boleh buat ada demokrasi Tetapi kalau kita tidak tahu menggunakan kebebasan kita Dan kita terlalu sangat uh, menggunakan kebebasan ini Mengikut nafsu kita uh, Kita boleh ada general strike General strike means the whole country will stop work What will happen when the whole country stops work? Obviously the economy will not grow It will not grow if everybody stops work The economy cannot grow, we cannot prosper And we cannot develop our country But we were very restrained Although we could have a strike We did not have a general strike That undermines the economy of the country Also, we could have the right to demonstrate Take to the streets, demonstrate And bring down the government But in Malaysia, we do not do that Well, there are some demonstrations But this were little demonstrations uh, They did not, they were not meant to bring down the government They were just, uh, uh, they demonstrate for oh, something that is not really very serious So, because we know how to restrain ourselves Despite the freedom that is given to us We restrain ourselves 
and therefore the country remains stable. And when the country is stable, then it can develop. If a country is unstable, it cannot develop. And we have, we all will have to pay a price. Then there is the government part. Now the government has power. Uh, it has power to to be corrupt. If it wants to be corrupt, it can be corrupt also. It wants to uh, make sure that only the relatives of the prime minister gets all the contracts. That can be done also. Uh, the government can do a lot of wrong things, but of course uh, a lot of people will say. I did a lot of wrong things, but that's all right. You you're free to say. But the fact is that uh, because of the restraint on the part of the government not to abuse the power that is given to the government, then the country was able to grow through various plans and policies. So you need two things. You need the people to understand the use of the freedom that they have and you need the government to feel responsible and not to abuse power given to the government. And because of that, our country has, has grown. Our, our country has got um, more problems than most other countries. Ours is a multiracial, multilingual, multireligious, uh, uh, a uh, country where people, wealth is not evenly distributed. So the government would like to see wealth if given uh, evenly dis uh, distributed among the people. So the government has to in introduce policies. The policies are basically to ensure that everybody enjoys a good life in our country. We cannot afford to have only one segment enjoying life and the other segment not enjoying life. Because if that happens, then the people who are deprived of wealth will one day take serious action. And you have seen this in countries like Tunisia, like Egypt, and like uh, Libya, and maybe some other countries as well. Why did the people demonstrate in those countries? They demonstrated because the government did not care for the people. The government's uh, people who were in power were busy enjoying life, building palaces for themselves, and uh, trying to accumulate as much wealth as possible through abuses of power. For years and years they do this. And the people who were afraid to do anything. But one fine day, they felt they could take it no longer. They had to rise and overthrow the government. That is what happens when a government does not care for the people. So the government must always care for the people. On the other hand, the people also must restrain themselves from abusing the power that has been given to them. If they abuse the power that is given to them, for example, since they can go on strike, they have a general strike. And as a result, the country can move. No business can be done. And people became poor. And the worst people will be the worst to suffer. The richest perhaps can, during a strike, go somewhere else and have a good time. But the poor, they cannot uh, have a good time. They cannot even have food on the table. And maybe if they have children studying abroad and they have to spend money on their children, they cannot, uh, they do not have the money to spend. So in a strike, it is the poorest section of the population which will suffer. The richest section of the people will suffer also but not to the extent that they have no food to eat, they cannot support their family, they cannot support the education of their children, and all that. They can, despite the strike. So when you resort to strike for no serious reason, then of course you are doing damage to yourself. 
doing damage to the country, doing damage to your future. So, fortunately, in Malaysia, people have the power to go on strike, they can demonstrate, but they don't. They don't take to the streets because they have really no very strong reasons for doing that. Because the government does look after the people. The government has created a lot of universities um, for, for the people to study, government universities, and the government has allowed for private universities to be set up so that there are more places for people to study. And we notice when during our travels, we notice a lot of Malaysian students uh, who, uh, who are studying uh, in foreign universities simply because their parents were rich. They were not in receipt of scholarships. They were from rich families and therefore they could, uh, the rich families could send them to foreign universities, universities to acquire an education. But there were many families which are not rich enough to send their children to foreign universities. So what did we do? What, does the government, what did the government do for these people who would like to have their children get an education but did not have enough money, could not get a scholarship? They could not get a scholarship either. Of course, there were a lot of scholarships in Malaysia, but no matter how many scholarships you have, there will always be someone who is qualified to go to the university, but could not get a scholarship. Now, for these people, what did we do? We conceived the idea of a twinning arrangement between Malaysian University and a foreign, well-known foreign university. A twinning arrangement. The training arrangement is meant to enable people who could not send their children abroad to study but have some money, enough money to pay for university education at home. But what happens was that we want them to have a degree that is recognized. And so we make an arrangement for a training uh, between Malaysian institution and a foreign institution. And because it is the institution, uh, in, in the Malaysian institution, you probably do the first two years. And then for the third year, for the final year, you can go abroad to get your degree. Or maybe it is two years in Malaysia, two years abroad. Uh, by that kind of arrangement, more people who otherwise would not be able to send their children to foreign universities, were able to send their children to a local university, feeling with a foreign university, and getting a degree that is recognized as if they went to study in the foreign university. That was what the government did, because we still wanted more people uh, to get access to education, and uh, by lowering the cost, by having the institution in the, in the country charging lower fee and only in the final year you have to go abroad, uh, it becomes more affordable. And of course now our Malaysian university, universities, uh, non-government universities have uh, gained stature so much so that they can issue their own degree and there is no longer any need for them to be twin, nor any need for them to send the third year students to a foreign university. So by that, by doing that, we reduce the cost of private university education. And therefore, more uh, people who cannot afford to send their children abroad, uh, who could not get a place in a government university, could still study in a local university and, uh, of course, getting the knowledge that will help improve their future. So it is a caring government, a government which keeps on thinking how to help the people. 
And I believe it is because the Malaysian government is much more caring that there is today no uh, no demonstration, prolonged demonstration to bring down the government. Of course, the opposition would like to see that. But uh, the people, as a whole, say no. Uh, it's, it's not our way. We don't like the government, we don't vote for the government. As you know, in the 2008 election, uh, the Barisan National lost five states. Uh, they lost the five states because obviously people did not like them. So they did not vote for BN candidates and in the end lost five, five states and one Wilaya. So in Malaysia, it is possible for you to bring down a government simply by voting. <coughs> so there is no necessity for us to have demonstration and to carry guns and fight against the government as we see on TV happening uh, in Libya. That is the measure of the caring that the government shows towards the people. And the people have, in return, voted the government every election, almost, well, every, every election the uh, uh, government party has won since we became independent. Some people say, well, that means we are not democratic. Well, democracy is uh, the right to bring down a government if you think it's not serving you. But if you think that because we have the vote and you can bring down the government, let's bring down the government for fun. Uh, if we do that, we will have to be a very high price. So Malaysians, Malaysians by and large, understand the workings of a democracy, that although certain freedoms are given, those freedoms must be uh, uh, enjoyed to a certain extent only, not to, uh, to uh, a degree that will uh, result in in the country having a lot of problems. Uh, I used to explain to people that yes, we believe in individual freedom. But individual freedom has a limit. If you go around cursing some, somebody, he's going to bash you on your face. He's free, you are free to say it, but you insult him, he's free to hit you. you see, so we are very careful. Although, uh, we, uh, we have free speech, we don't abuse the right to free speech. Of course, nowadays you see some abuses on the blog, for example. I'm also a blogger. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I've not done that. I've not done that. So they cannot sue me. Uh, because, um, well, I believe what I see is quite true. <laughs> Even if some people do not believe it, that's all right. But I, I believe it. I believe I have uh, you know, this deep stuff to the truth. So, although we have uh, the new media, even the new media must be used with uh, responsibility, a sense of responsibility, not to abuse the right to use the new media. And if Malaysians by and large have got a fair sense of what is right and what is wrong, what is the role of government and what is the role of the people. And if they restrain themselves, the government restrains itself. Uh, the government of Malaysia, I think, do not build palaces for the Prime Minister. I tried to build a palace when I was Prime Minister. Unfortunately, the Ministry of Finance was not very good <laughs> for the Prime Minister in Putrajaya. Uh, they say that uh, that house has got a tunnel that goes right up to KLIA. KLIA because I was preparing to run away. <laughs> so, so if uh, people chase after me, I can disappear into the tunnel uh, and reach KLIA and I will take off. Maybe I'll go to Moscow. <laughs>
but uh, that actually there is a tunnel. There is a tunnel, but it's not for me. Because uh, we uh, wanted uh, uh, this MRT to be installed in Putrajaya. So before, when we planned Putrajaya, we provided for tunnels for the train to, to pass through, as well as for the services to be uh, located there. So water pipes, uh, electrical wires, uh, telephone wires if, if necessary, were all inside a special tunnel built for them, so that if anything goes wrong, then the repairman can go into the tunnel and uh, repair the, the, the line or the pipe or whatever. But of course there is another tunnel which is meant for underground train, uh, but it's not connected to the house of the Prime Minister. <laughs> so it's not true actually that uh, the Prime Minister was preparing to run away from the country. Uh, but uh, some people tell the same story, but uh, there are some people who will believe it. Uh, that is uh, the freedom that we exercise in our own country. Now, what is your role? Your role as student. Your first responsibility is to get an education. You need to gain the education because it is going to ensure that you will be able to make a living, a decent living, as a doctor, as an engineer, as a uh, whatever that you study. You can go home and apply your knowledge in order to improve your capacity to earn money. But uh, beyond that, I uh, was asked by some um, students that you know, what would be my advice? I have a lot of advice. <laughs> I have no time to give you all the advice. But always remember, you are what you are because of the community, the people around you. Suppose you live in Malaysia, which is uh, without any population, or you live in the middle of Sahara Desert, there's no population there, nobody lives there. Can you uh, gain an education, go to school? Nobody, nobody is there, you're alone. You can't go to school. Even if you qualify as a doctor, you go back. Who are you going to treat? There's nobody living there. The reason why you are successful, you are able to earn money, is because of the community around you. The community, the people around you, the people in the country, they created the environment in which you can gain an education. So you owe them, you owe them a living. It's because there are people living in Malaysia that you can get an education, get qualified and go back and practice practice as a doctor to earn money. Don't you think that you owe the community something? Yes. yes. Yeah. And then somebody says yes. <laughs> you know nowadays we talk about corporate uh, responsibility. In the good old days, the big business people, they make a lot of money and they think the money is all theirs. They don't even give their workers sufficient pay. They thought that it was because they are brilliant, they can make money, so the money belongs to them. But gradually they have been told that they have in the first place to share fairly the income that they get from their business with their workers. Because the workers made it possible for them to make money. So it stands to reason that they must support and give a fair share of their earnings to their workers. But workers alone is not enough. The community is important. Without the community, even if you can produce sophisticated uh, uh, products, uh, computers for example, you can produce them. You and your workers in the technology that you have, you produce computers, but there is nobody in the country to buy them. Can you make any money? I'm not sure you can. You can
can only make money if you can sell to the people around you. And of course, right from the very beginning, you owe those people for your education, etc. So, when you have made your money, it is only fair that you should return something to the community. That is why today we talk about corporate responsibility. Now, transfer that corporate responsibility to you as an individual. You have gained an education. You have had the opportunity to study, to acquire knowledge, and with your knowledge, you are going to earn more money than your parents. Therefore, you should think about the environment which enables you to get this education. And you should feel that you are you owe them. You owe them a living. Not all your money should go to them, but a small percentage of your money, apart from the taxes that you have to pay. We all pay taxes. Uh, you should be willing to sacrifice uh, something uh, for the community. And you may have read in the papers that uh, Bill Gates he is a billionaire. His total asset is worth 70 billion US dollars. Recently, he and Warren Buffett announced that they will give half their wealth back to the, to the community. Half their wealth. I mean, Bill Gates has 70 billion. He's going to give half of that to the community for free. Warren Buffet also will give half his wealth to, uh, back to the people. And a number of other billionaires have also agreed to give away their wealth. They feel they should do this because they own the community the success that they have achieved. They owe it to the community. So they want to give it back to, to the people. And even in Malaysia recently, Vincent Tan announced that he's going to give away half his wealth. I hope he remembers me. Because I'm his friend. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the thing about him is that he realizes that he owes the community something. Now, when you, uh, you are better off, you are not going to be billionaire perhaps. I don't know, maybe some of you will become a billionaire. But even if you are not a billionaire, the fact that you can earn a living in the community means that you owe something to the community. So you must give back what you owe by way of service. Service to the community. Uh, some people might uh, decide, well, why should I go home? I stay in this country, no, 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 I don't know why. <laughs> some people we sent to some countries and they were qualified to be doctors. They did not want to come back. Why? Well, I can earn a better living in that country. But you forget, you forget that you owe your country something. You should go back to serve your country, to serve the people who made it possible for you to acquire the knowledge and therefore have a good living. Although you may not earn as much money at home as you can earn abroad, but always remember that the cost of living in the country abroad is much higher than the cost of living in Malaysia. So I hope that when you finish your studies, I don't think you will choose to leave the place. <laughs> but if you are tempted to live in this very old country, always remember what you owe to the people of Malaysia. So come back and serve the country. Thank you.
bidang dan kebiasaan sebelum menentukan soalan Soalan yang hendak dikemukakan hendaklah ringkas dan jelas Pelajar yang ingin mengemukakan soalan dipersilakan ke ruang tengah Terima kasih saya ingin mengucapkan selamat datang kepada tuan-tuan tuan hari ke Moscow Kalau tidak kalau tak salah saya ini kali kedua Hai, Nama saya Sibu Priyan, saya mewakili pelajar persatuan uh, RSMU Kajian Teknikal University Sebenarnya saya bukan ingin mengatakan menanya sebarang soalan Cuma ingin menampahkan uh, sebab pendapat uh, yang tuan telah mengatakan Seperti mana tuan tahu, pokok sini boleh tinggal <coughs> Boleh hidup kalau di Malaysia mati Begitu juga dengan kami Kami survive for six years over here Jadi kira, bila kita datang ke Malaysia Tetap kami akan hidup Kan, terima kasih Seperti itu telah mengatakan Kita haruslah ke Malaysia Memang betul Saya, saya boleh menunjukkan bahawa Almost 90% Akan ke Malaysia jadi satu contoh uh, Dun, kalau kita ke supermarket di sini kan, uh, manggis tiga biji manggis yang kering itu enam ratus ribu, enam puluh ringgit. Kat Malaysia sekilo dekat tiga ringgit saja. Dan ini merupakan salah satu uh, kepimpinan tu untuk uh, memastikan ekonomi di Malaysia uh, memadai untuk semua uh, masyarakat. Jadi saya ingin cakap terima kasih atas uh, jasa pada kepimpinan itu okay, Masa ini uh, Sebab uh, Isu semasa pelajar Rusia Dikatakan tak berapa qualify Dan sebagainya Tapi sebenarnya kami telah Melintasi pelbagai rintangan Dari cuaca, bahasa Dan budaya Dan kami cuma memerlukan sedikit masa untuk edak kembali adaptasi kami di Malaysia Dan saya pasti memang semua pelajar di sini Boleh, terutama di pelajar perubatan Boleh menunjukkan ke kehebatan mereka Terima kasih uh, Ini tanggung jawab untuk kita di sini Apabila lulus uh, Dan mungkin paksa memasuki pemerintahan kembali ke tanah air tetapi mestilah tunggu prestasi yang tinggi apabila dia menunjuk secara constant prestasi yang tinggi lama kelamaan kita tak payah guna uh, qualifying examination lagi dan akan diterima saja penuntut-penuntut daripada sini kerana kita tahu mereka semua adalah layak untuk praktis sebagai Medical, medical. Saya punya dua soalan. Yang pertama berkaitan dengan ekonomi. Yang mana baru-baru ini atau mungkin hampir setahun, tu mengucapkan tentang kataan USD umpama tisu yang diinginkan di dalam jari atau bahasa kita tisu tanda. Jadi pandangan tu terhadap ekonomi semasa dunia yang diwakili oleh US, USD ataupun Amerika dan kesan terhadap kami kepad student di sini itu yang pertama yang kedua adalah berkaitan dengan emas emas dan kerak pandangan Tun uh, Dr. Mahathir tentang dinar emas untuk dunia kembali kepada dinar dan pandangan Tun terhadap dinar Kelantan yang dikeluarkan sebagai jual beli di pasar-pasar dan pandangan Tun terhadap dinar di Perak yang digunakan untuk kadar simpanan Jadi itu saja dari saya Assalamualaikum Ini pertama berkenaan dengan komen saya terhadap apa nama US dollar yang saya panggil sebagai toilet table Itulah benda yang digunakan dalam bilik mandi ya, Sebenarnya US dollar tak ada satu nilai satu sen pun sebab yang kita dia yang mempunyai nilai ialah kerana kita masih berguna kertas ni kertas yang dicap ni sebenarnya dia tak ada backing 
no gold banking, give me a uh, US is in double deficit, trade deficit as well as budgetary deficit. Dan dia utang dunia sebanyak 2 trillion dollars. Dia adalah sebuah negara yang utang lebih banyak daripada uh, perbelanjaannya. Jadi dengan kerana itu, uh, dollar itu tidak ada nilai sebenarnya. Kalau kita tak guna dolar itu, dia tak ada nilai. Tapi kita uh, memberi nilai kepadanya kerana kita terima bayaran dalam mata wang uh, dolar. Kalau kita tak terima, dia tak ada, tak ada value sama sekali. Uh, itulah sebabnya saya buat uh, komen. Dan kita di Malaysia sebenarnya sudah tidak uh, simpan mata wang dolar terlalu banyak. Kalau dulu 70 80 peratus daripada reserve kita kita simpan dalam mata wang US dollar tetapi sekarang ini sudah dikurangkan saya ingat mungkin dalam 30 peratus saja in US dollar. Yang lain in yen, in euro, in gold. Ya, jadi mata wang kita mempunyai nilai kerana kita ada simpanan dalam mata wang yang berharga dalam emas yang mempunyai harga ya, saya fikir dia tak punya kesan banyak kepada penuntut kerana uh, kita di sini di sini tak guna US dollar dan saya fikir kerjaan tak hantar US dollar kepada kita ataupun ibu bapa kita tidak hantar US dollar uh, sepatutnya convertible currency yang uh, boleh uh, diguna untuk kita beli rubah jadi kesannya tak banyak kepada penutup penutup uh, Secondly, uh, uh, US dollar ini purchasing power dia kuat Jadi sebab kita panggil McDonald Index McDonald Index ini ialah Kalau kita beli McDonald di Malaysia Dia harganya RM2 Di Amerika harganya RM2 Bermakna barang itu nilainya $2. $2 dalam uh, Malaysian currency is equivalent to $6. Ringgit. Tapi di Malaysia kita guna cuma $2 ringgit saja beli barang yang sama. Bermakna bahawa walaupun orang Amerika mendapat pendapatan yang tinggi tapi purchasing powernya kurang. Sebab itu di Malaysia kita punya per capita income today is about $7,000. Tetapi actual uh, uh, apa nama, purchasing power of our per capita income is about 13,000 US dollar. Kerana kita boleh dengan 7,000 itu, kita boleh beli lebih banyak barang daripada 7,000 uh, dollar boleh beli di Amerika Syarikat. Itu satu. Yang perkara yang kedua berkenaan dengan mass and bear, kita cadang supaya kita guna emas right. whether you call it dinar whatever is not important kita guna emas sebagai mata wang tetapi bukan untuk kegunaan harian kita tak akan bubuh emas dalam poket sebab itu pergi barang because before you reach the shop somebody is going to cost you on the head to be your emas kita punya cadangan ialah kita guna mata wang bernilai emas untuk dagangan antara negara untuk international trade saja dan dengan itu kita tak perlu nak bawa pergi balik emas kita value sesuatu ikut emasnya nilai dan kita boleh jual dan kita dapat bayar bayar balik sebanyak dalam apa juga mata wang tapi nilainya mestilah sama dengan nilai emas kalau kita guna emas uh, untuk uh, membeli barang itu Jadi itu cadangan kita Tapi kerjaan Kelantan Tak tanya apa pun ke saya Tiba-tiba <laughs> dia buat duit dengan dengan emas Bila satu orang dapat emas Dia tak nak guna Dia simpan Simpan pasal apa kita simpan emas Pasal nilai emas akan naik sepanjang masa boleh turun sikit tapi dia naik Kita ambil kira Bretton Woods At the Bretton Woods Agreement 
the US dollar, 35 US dollar is equivalent to one ounce of gold. 35 US dollar is equal to one ounce of gold. But now, 1,400 US dollar can buy one ounce of gold. Bermakna US dollar dah jatuh nilainya. Jadi kalau kita simpan mata uang uh, dollar, kita rugi lah. Sebaliknya kalau kita simpan emas, uh, tahun 1946, masa 46, masa Bretton Woods, kita simpan one ounce of, of gold. Instead of 35 dollars, we keep one ounce of gold. Now, if you keep gold, you can get 1,400 US dollar. But if you have kept 35 US dollar at that time, today it is still 35 US dollar, but have to some interest. That's why 40, 40 US dollar. 40 US dollar not believe many mana gold. You see, so if you keep currency, it depreciates. But if you keep gold, it, it appreciates in value against the currency. That is why when the Kelantan government issued gold coins, people bought the coins. Bawa lah. Satu, uh, satu, saya tak tahu berapa dia di charge satu coin. Maybe 10 ringgit, maybe 100 ringgit. Orang beli, dia tak guna. Dia tak guna lah itu. Dia simpan lah dalam peti besi. Itu pun di mana-mana yang dia simpan lah. Bawa tinam ke apa kan. <laughs> Tapi dia tak akan guna gold in order to buy anything. Lepas itu apa jadi? Tak ada lah mo, there's no more coins di Kelantan. Tak ada lah kerjaan nak keluar coins, orang ambil simpan. Keluar coins, orang ambil simpan. It's not practical. That's why I never suggested that. That is the Kelantan government which uh, thought it was very smart to issue gold dinner. Uh, that is not the way to do things. That is why uh, we think that we should not use gold dinner, but we should have a dinner that has the equivalent value of gold. Duit tu masih di atas ni lagi. Terima kasih. Kita tahu dunia ni kan sekarang ekonomi macam tak stable ni kan. Macam mana uh, uh, keadaan ekonomi Malaysia sekarang? Kemana, kat mana stage kita? Kemana kita tujui? Dan uh, new ETP by Dr. Sri Najib Tun Razak uh, Do you have faith in it? Uh, apa yang boleh benefit uh, you seperti kita? Jadi kami tahu Terima kasih Terima kasih Seperti mana kita semua tahu Apabila masalah uh, Pada financial crisis it's the U.S. Uh, kind of subprime loans of us uh, U.S. Uh, uh, economy collapsed. The banks uh, were, well, had to close down unless they were built out. That also affects Europe. Uh, in England, in Germany, in France, in Italy, there are other effects like the Pijatuhan crisis mata wang Amerika mempunyai kesan yang sama di Eropah sebabnya ialah kerana orang Eropah membeli uh, segala produk financial produk daripada Amerika uh, mereka uh, beli apa nama hedge funds invest in hedge funds in currency trading in subprime loan apa semua sebab itu uh, ekonomi Eropah juga affected Fortunately for us, orang Malaysia, orang Malaysia tidak membeli, tidak melabur dalam American punya financial products. Uh, because of that, kita tak terlibat sangat. Tapi adalah juga kesan. Karena apabila Amerika jadi miskin, Amerika adalah pasar bagi kita. Bila dia jadi miskin, dia tak boleh beli barang yang kita jual. Jadi, ekonomi kita is affected simply because we lose our market. That be not because we invested in their financial products. So, economy kita setelah melalui beberapa tak sampai dua tahun saya fikir uh, mudum sikit di ekonomi tapi sekarang sudah dipulih 
Dibuli semula kerana kita tak boleh jual kepada Amerika Kita cari pasar lain Kebanyakan daripada pasaran kita ialah di negeri China Dan di India dan di lain-lain tempat Dengan itu, ekonomi kita masih tumbuh Dan uh, tahun lepas Mengikut uh, angka yang di, uh, dilapor oleh pihak kerajaan Pertumbuhan sebanyak 7% That is very high growth 7% is very high growth This year maybe the percentage will be lower But still we are growing We are more stable than England or Germany or France or Italy or America America is really in a very bad shape It is actually a bankrupt country But because it is very powerful Orang masih terima di Amerika But actually it is bankrupt It owes the world about Altogether about 8 trillion dollars uh, 1 trillion to China alone But overall it owes the world 8 trillion dollars Which it cannot pay It doesn't have that kind of money Kalau dia cap pun Tak nak cap lah <laughs> it has this uh, deficit uh, in trade, deficit in budget. Uh, it is spending huge sums of money on these wars. War in Iraq, war in Afghanistan is using huge sums of money on these wars. And now they have Medicare. They will not belanja to support rakyat berkenaan dengan ubat, perubatan dan sebagainya. So the government really has no money And it is printing money So uh, I don't think you would like Malaysia to print money Because then it is toilet paper That is why we call American dollar toilet paper Jadi uh, kita sebenarnya harus bijak Mengurus ekonomi negara kita Kalau kita berhati-hati Tidak belanja terlalu banyak Kita uh, uh, hutang pun tak boleh terlalu banyak InsyaAllah uh, Ekonomi kita akan lebih stable As it is now It is quite stable Thank you Terima kasih yang luar biasa uh, Sebenarnya banyak lagi soalan Yang hendak dikemukakan Dan saya yakin uh, yang sama berbahagia pun Dia menjawab seperti atas Kesetukan masa Tapi mohon maaf kepada pelajar yang ingin bertanya soalan uh, kerana kita akan bagi peluang kepada pelajar untuk bergambar Sesi bergambar dengan yang berbahagia tuan selepas ini Jadi uh, saya rasa uh, kita berakhir di sini uh, Majlis kita pada petang ini Sekali lagi uh, kami mengucapkan Ribuan terima kasih kepada yang berbahagia tuan uh, Dr. Mahathir Muhammad Yang berbahagia tuan setiap seluruh Dr. Setiap Memahali Ali Agassi Dan pegawai-pegawai serta pelajar sekalian um, kita warga Malaysia di Moskow amat bangga uh, Menerima kunjungan yang amat berbahagia Tuan uh, Tuan Dr. Mahathir Mohamad Tuan Dr. Setia Semua Muhammad Ali dan Nabi Dari Kasih Sekian Dari amanat yang disampaikan akan dijadikan azimat Dan segala pengumatan yang berbahagia Tuan Untuk agama, bangsa negara, dan negara kita Malaysia Amat kami sanggungi Sekian wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Saya mempersilakan semua pegawai untuk berada meningkatkan majlis dewan dan kita ada sedikit jamuan. Uh, pelajar kita akan uh, mula sesi bergambar bermula dengan barisan hadapan di mana tuan akan berada di hadapan kita terutama dan kita bergambar secara berkumpul.